it, it has a lot to do with deprogramming yourself because we've been programmed to perceive reality a certain way, which is based on a lie and a false matrix. So when we start getting these bleed-through effects of technology or contactees or abductees or even with me, whether I've been through with the corporate technology, you start understanding there's a bigger scene behind it all, and you start to decode it all. So, yeah, it's mind-blowing without a doubt, and for people who are not calibrated to even understand it, oh, my gosh, it's like they can't even comprehend it unless they experience it firsthand. So, yeah, there's a big problem there. There's a disconnect. But I think people are are starting to see. I mean, they have no choice because right now the masses are being calibrated for UFO activity, obviously through visuals, through some people are contactees, some people are getting psychotronically hit through my labs and everything else. So you've got all sorts of stuff happening across the board. And then you've got the Billy Meyer material, which has been there all along, steady and cloaked and hidden to some degree, discredited on a lot of different levels. But at the same time, I swear to you, you know there's some truth to what he's talking about. Um, and every time you're telling me some of the technology, I'm understanding it. So, and after where I've been, I can decode just about anything. You know, you put a craft in front of me, I'll know where everything is on the craft. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. So, um, you know, I, I do get it. I do. They, they talk about our society, and they use words like aberration. Aberration, and aberration is something that has gone down the wrong path of evolution. Mm-hmm. And... An aberration can't survive because it has gone down a path that will lead to self-destruction. And they tell us that what's causing the destruction of our society are things like cynical materialism, fascism, our fanatical religions. And they tell us that we've departed from the right, the normal, the usual course. Mm -hmm. And what is coming is what they call the third global conflagration. Which, interestingly enough, the term conflagration can mean war or it can mean a great fire. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, isn't that interesting? You know how I'm obsessed with the fires. I was going to say, and that can take on a lot of different different formulas, especially with our, our sun and, you know, the way it's been acting these days. Yeah, I was going to ask you, it seems to me like, um, you know, you're right. It's a disconnection from, from source versus people's everyday violence. I mean, there seems to be a lot of violence. We've talked about this before up here. I mean, it's just everything seems to be escalating in a very negative fashion. So, but, but to me, it sounds like this material is echoing the higher self. It's, it's echoing an aspect of source in the full light universe, which is a reminder of where, where we're heading if we don't change the direction, the direction of where we're going on a negative scale. I mean, things are just getting out of control, and that's all due to the false programming, wouldn't you say? Yes, that's a very good observation they they have a lot to say about our religions and they talk about our religions as being fanatical or sects and and a sect is a philosophical political group especially one that's considered to be extremely dangerous and they also talk about fanaticism in our religions and a fanatic is something who has intense uncritical devotion they they have no they 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 lose all sense of self analysis mm-hmm. and it's very interesting if you look at our religions the way they've gone off you know if you look at for example the roman catholic religion and the pedophilia among the you know the the priests mm-hmm. if you look at the extreme muslim religions we see incredible violence today. Mm-hmm. We see the beheadings, which, are, by the way, go on in the U.S., but you don't hear about them much. At least I'm, mm-hmm. I don't hear about them much. And then we, we also have in the Muslim religion, in the extreme forms of it, the female genital mutilation, mm-hmm. where they take a razor blade and they cut the clitoris and part of the vagina of these poor young women they cut it right out now this is an absurdity and that's why they call our society an aberration because what they say is we're going against the creational natural laws and when you do that eventually you destroy yourself yeah it's a self-destruct sequence you know that's the bottom line well it certainly needs to go in the opposite direction without a doubt and they say 
They use the word collapse because it may involve the collapse of nature. We've we've desecrated nature. We've we've violated nature. We've dishonored nature. We've polluted nature. Uh, and civilization right now could literally collapse because of the the damage that we have done to the earth. Mm-hmm. So we are in the state of regression. We are we are already regressing. Uh, we're we're no longer evolving. So it's a we could be heading to a global catastrophe. And that's why I say, and I think Michael Horn's totally on base on this aspect, that the Meyer material is the key to our future survival. And what they say is that it'll take 800 years for the people of the earth to finally come around 100% to this material. But I think there are people that are starting, you know, in little pockets around the world Mm -hmm. to start to pay attention. Well, you know, it's really the simplicity of life is really um, compassion and higher consciousness. I mean, if people can break through the false programs, then literally they can go to the next level of spirituality, which is based on compassion for your fellow man and just being able to get along and coexist. And that's really not a hard equation, but for some reason it seems to be right now in this timeline. But I agree with you. I think we're on a a wicked spiral right now, which needs to be altered. And there are those of us who are very accelerated in consciousness and really don't need to be here anymore. And then there are those who are just never going to get it, whether it's fear of going forward, fear of being persecuted, fear of being targeted or whatever i mean literally if, if you fear is an obstacle you and i both know this it's a blockage and if people don't break through that barrier then there's no way to get out of it and, and get out of that false matrix you you talked about like you felt like you belong somewhere else and i during the break i went and had to find my notes and pick up this note this was, this was a question given to billy how do you feel being among the people on earth when your original birthplace was in far higher regions? And he answered, while my original birthplace lies billions of years away in the past, I continue to feel connected with it at all times, and I do not deny that I often long for it. Nevertheless, I am now at home on the earth, where I have many dear friends throughout the world, but this does not alter the fact that I often feel extremely lonely. The fault does not rest with my friends, but it generally prompted by the influence on me by the state of the spiritual and consciousness related terrestrial world, which is so dissimilar to the world that was my birthplace and in in effect still is. So he he longs for that higher consciousness. Mm-hmm. Well, it's nice to be around your own kind. Let's put it that way. You know, it's nice to be around like minds. And I think that's why in the old days when they had the mystery schools and other areas where people were very advanced in consciousness, they would stay in their own areas with their own race, so to speak, or species, whatever you want to call it, so that they could brainstorm and work together on a higher level of spirit. So you can see where everything's colliding at once here on this world. I certainly can. And, and I think that, you know, it's it's okay to be different, but... There's got to be some peace here on this world. There has to be peace on Earth. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, it's all chaos in motion. So I think his, his message is very good. And it's very peaceful from what I've seen. I don't see anything that would have attracted somebody trying to take him out. But, you know, people are crazy. Probably the most, one of the most beautiful things in the Meyer material it talks about, it says, well, let me go back to Simiasi when she said, Love and wisdom go together, and that the creation and its laws are love and wisdom at the same time. And Billy wrote a book some years later. That he's, and in that book it says, The incredible splendor of nature is the visible expression of the love of creation. And that creation radiates love. So that every moment and every place we can experience the radiating love of creation if we are open to it. And we should be able to stand in front of a tree and recognize that love is the highest principle in creation and that everything follows that principle in absolute logic. So that every tiny plant, 
every tiny animal in creation fulfills its purpose. It's only man that has the free will enough and the consciousness enough to step outside the normal path of creation. But if you'll go into the forest, and I tell people to do this, go into the forest, maybe not this time of year, it's too cold, but if you go into the forest and you listen, you can hear the cicadas and the crickets and the frogs and the peepers and the birds, which I like to speculate and say, sing because they sense the radiating love of creation. But all of these creatures are connected. And the Meyer material talks about psychic swinging waves that connect many of these creatures in nature. And if you watch, you can see a whole flock of birds move as a unit from one tree to the other. That's because they have a connection. In the same way with a school of fish, all moving together. And one of the things my material says is we should have respect or venerability towards the entirety of nature and towards the creation. And respect is a, a deep feeling of admiration for something. And venerability talks about being able to appreciate the great age and impressive dignity of, of nature. Right. So, and it also describes nature as being a tightly woven, tightly woven web. Now, when something is woven, that means to be interlaced, like threads of yarn and strips of fibrous material. And we are in a web of life that's interlaced one with another, and it forms an indissoluble web. That means you can't take one piece out of it without affecting the whole. So, what we on the earth need to learn to relearn to do is live in a balance with this tightly woven web of life. Mm -hmm, exactly. And right now it's pretty much off balance, if you ask me. Yeah. There's a lot going on here. And, you know, I talk a lot about the magnetic field of the earth getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And everybody doesn't seem to realize that that's going to affect our spin and rotation. In my opinion, I think it will. That's my theory anyway. And I, I do think that if we don't stop the course we're on right now, and if people don't start paying attention and stop getting so so paranoid and so fear-based, then we are screwed. And, you know, I'm, I've said that a lot. And one of the reasons I do radio and I'm on here is because I want people to understand that we need to acknowledge the fact that, there, that there's a self-destruct sequence here on this world. And that um, those of us who are here who are awakened to a higher levels of consciousness can see it. Apparently, Billy Meyer can see it, too, because he's addressing it through different levels of his own spirituality. One of the things that I keep going back to, what he, when he talked about the third millennium, is he said that our leaders are becoming megalomaniacal and they are taking away our rights of self-determination. And we've seen that through the gun control, through the, the loss of the freedom of speech even. Uh, we, we no longer have the, the right to travel without being harassed. Uh, so there's all the breakdowns of our freedoms but something else is happening that's very bad, too, in that the people, the people, and it's, it says it this way in my material, are becoming indolent and obtuse and also becoming indifferent. And that's causing a great anger among people. And we're seeing things like the riots in Ferguson, Missouri, and all of these historical trends coming together and I, I go back to when Billy was meeting with Svoth, and Svoth told him, back when Billy was a young boy, he said, the third millennium would begin when the atomic bombs are dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and that what would come then is that slowly there would be a confusion and a maliciousness that would come over the earth, and then there would be a slowly approaching global collapse. I, st I still think we have time to stop this. 
from happening. Well, we do, but it's going to take effort and consciousness and motion. It's going to take people um, dis- disconnecting from the false matrix. And honestly, I mean, Mark, uh, I've watched this stuff going down a dark spiral for a while now, and I'm telling you, I don't think it's going to change. I, I think it would take a, an act of the full light universe to intercept the world and eclipse it, or eclipse it rather, um, to a point where people start really getting it together. And that's my own impression here. I'd like to see it turn around, and I'm, I'm not a cynic, but after where I've been with covert technology, and I've been on the front lines of that communication and understand it very well, uh, I've watched people mock it, and I've watched a lot of people understand it. And I'll tell you right now, they're not ready to comprehend the bigger scenery behind it all, and I, I was hoping they would be calibrated for it, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But honestly, I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> 